It's showtime. Welcome back to PHLY Union Podcast. As we have been waiting, we've been talking about it. The moment is finally here, live and in studio. You don't care about me, who I am, Renee Washington. It's all about Alejandro Bedoya finally joining us on the guest. The captain's here. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. <laughs> I got to walk the beautiful space, so congratulations to you and the rest of Philly Sports. Yeah, yes. Cool. Obviously, there's always incentives out there, right, for players, for coaches, whoever mm-hmm. it may be. And, and those are important, right, because I think those uh, mentally get you going to to try to achieve those incentives and, and get those that bonus money or whatever. But I think there needed it to be that, that financial prize for players because at the end of the day, um, we're the ones that are playing. You know, obviously there's people that are share a boardroom and right. the, there's executive, the front offices, but you know, they're looking at X's and O's, right? They're looking at how can we maximize revenue? How can we, you know, make a profit here or there? Mm-hmm. Um, but they're not the ones playing. They're not the ones traveling. I know Jose was asking earlier about the Latin community specifically in, in Philly mm. and just the ex- growth of the game. Um, you know, what do you think the team or, or the league can even do to continue to grow the game to be able to tap into those other markets? Diversity is key. I know growing up for me playing soccer, I rarely saw another girl on the soccer field that was my complexion or, or even just a, a, bl- a black girl that I played against. Um, I don't know from your experiences how much you even saw that growing up, but still, it still needs, we're seeing an improvement, but there still needs to be more diversity in the game. Yeah. What do you think the league and the team specifically can do to help from your from your standpoint yeah look i think that's great timing in that question it is hispanic heritage yes, month it is. so it's you know a good time <laughs> um but yeah look i think uh, more diversity is, is is needed right and um philadelphia being a minority majority city i think still the latino community though is not where i think it should be mm. in philadelphia you know, and I, I, this is outside soccer, but I'm working with another organization called Live Work Philadelphia. And, and part of the just on that is trying to it's a kind of a resident town attraction program, right, to try to help bring even more uh, Hispanics and, and add more diversity, you know, to make the city more vibrant, inclusive, Love that. all that stuff. Yeah, also, yeah. the things that they're saying that make you have those moments of realizing, like, holy crap, you are much younger than me. Well, <laughs> to, to that point, I mean, the lingo nowadays and the slang, I, I, don't, these days. I, I don't understand anything. <laughs> Maybe like cap, no cap is like the only thing I get because the other stuff that they say, <laughs> whatever they're talking about next to me, it's like I always have to ask, like, what, what does that even mean? Or like, I'm, I'm a dad now, you know, I got you know like yeah. dad, look at this it's like this is like dad style like going out to like a golf or something <laughs> uh <laughs> it is the style of about like 90 percent of the people in our office alone rock the classic polo khakis look it's polo definitely khakis. a dad look yeah, just it's a simple. safe look Keep it though simple. safe very you know? it is very I don't safe got too much simple. time in the morning i gotta get the kids to school you know and all this so i just put on yeah outside of uh tearing up on the soccer field you still have to be a dad too so you don't <laughs> really have time to be all gq like maybe everybody else throughout your career it wasn't always easy you weren't always, um, you know, predicted and expected to be a future professional soccer player. You had coaches that didn't think you were going to be good enough, fast enough, strong enough, whatever it was. So there are even those factors when you had the talent, but you don't have maybe the support or the belief. Mm. And for you, what helped you push through that when you were getting those rejections or those emails? I know you say you still keep them probably as motivation. Mm. What helped you use that as motivation and not something that was discouraging? The friends that I had, especially in my family. My father was a, a very important figure in my life. He mm. was the one that kind of, you know, instilled this mindset in me that like, you know, you don't need to listen to the, the noise or, you know, the negative stuff. Just always be more positive and yeah. optimistic. And because the belief in you is what really matters. And that's what's going to drive you. So for myself, Renee Washington, and our lovely guest, a great first guest of many to come here on the show, Ali Bedoya. Thank mm. you guys so much for tuning in. Hit that like button, subscribe, and be sure to catch us for more here on PHLY Union Podcast in the future. Have a great weekend. Do, 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 do. Go Union. See you guys next time. (laughs) We all silly like the mayor. 